to um, a very special episode today here on What's Your Motive. Um, got some gentlemen here I grew up with, some of them I still work with, we still uh, tap in with each other and uh, looking forward to a great conversation um, surrounding um, men's mental health for the sake of men's health awareness. Um, looking to um, allow them to expound on the things that they're doing, some of their personal things that they go through on a regular basis, but also trying to be a resource for those that are watching and things like that. So. Um, just to begin, introduce yourself, let us know a little bit about what you're doing. All right. So we start out with me. Hi, I'm the elder statesman of the, of the panel up here. I'm William Holloway. Um, <laughs> I've been in education for a long time, over 25 years. Currently, I'm uh, an advisor at MATC. Uh, my man Walter's over here is my business partner. We do some educational consulting. Um, and just, you know, man about the community, trying to make sure we uh, tap in with these bridges, tap in with these other folks that are really doing things in the city and really trying to forward that message to be able to help whoever we can. You know, today we're talking about the men and we need a lot of help. So, you know, we uh, really need to talk about that today. So that's my little spiel. So I'm going to pass it to my man's here. <laughs> that's difficult to follow up. <laughs> uh, my name is Lee. Uh, I am a father of a nine year old son. Uh, on a trucking company uh, here locally. And um, we just do a few things out in the community. We have the Special Needs and Wants podcast that is um, targeting the families of children um, and not even only children, people uh, with special needs um, and disabilities. So we are targeting um, the headspace of, of those family members. So um, that's what we started off the year doing. And um, We've had a small impact, but, um, you know, it's basically based around mental health, which is which leads us right here to what we're talking about. So, yeah. All right. I'm Harry Evans, uh, born and raised here in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Um, I've worked in the health and wellness space now for about 13 years. Started off in fitness um, training, um, your athletes, everyday young professionals, just making sure everybody good on the health and wellness tip, even in performance. Um, and then I founded a grassroots organization called Heal Black Man, centered around black men's mental health that's rooted in my own experiences and not having the awareness on my own mental health and going through about a depression and nobody noticing and me not even noticing um, and having the blessing of a wellness check from a best friend of mine that came to visit and just saw that I wasn't truly like myself. And um, that really created awareness for me to create spaces for black men to come together and get comfortable with vulnerability and talking about the things that we need to talk about in order to be better individuals, better husbands, fathers, um, and, and, and leaders of our community. Dope. Absolutely, agree with my brothers here. My name is Kyle Hayden. Um, I work with Walt and Will at MATC, um, a student service specialist. I do a number of things there. Um, uh, still on the fence about the returning aspect of being an assistant coach, um, but that <laughs> just got a promotion out. over there. Just, just, <laughs> yeah. just bumped up. What you just bump up to on, on, on June T? Oh yeah, well, recently appointed to the chairman of the Black Excellence Leadership Alliance. Nice, uh, it's congratulations. Affinity Group, and we look to support our Black and African American employees and students um, in every way possible, making sure that we are promoted and uh, we're promoting cultural awareness and all types of things that. Um, support black excellence. So, um, man, that's it. And also my, my educational background is in marriage and family therapy. So my whole goal is to uh, get my doctoral degree and um, open up a practice and focus that uh, component of mental health within the relationship dynamic. He's also dressed down. Also, very if you know him, he's very, very I'm dressed down. Incredibly dressed down. down. I'm normally suited yeah, no. on every occasion. In incredibly dressed down. They, they call him ghost. They call him ghost from power. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> My man, it could be 100 degrees. He got a suit on. Man. 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 Nah. I think he got a suit vending machine. Like, he just be <laughs> A14 today, and he just, <laughs> and man. get everything ready for him. <laughs> <laughs> Tie, everything. Easy. Flower, oh, all that. Right. Easy. <laughs> Oh, so, um, I'm your host, Walt. If you haven't tuned in, please tune in, like, comment, subscribe, do all that good jazz. Hopefully, we get a sponsor one of these days. Maybe he'll black man a sponsor. Oh, man. Get with it. Get one with day. it. Get with it. Get with it. Yeah. Hey, one day, speaking into what is this. For sure, for sure. So, uh, fellas, my first question for you guys, and some of you alluded to it um, in your introductions, but uh, what are you doing in the mental space for others and those around you currently? 
So I, I'll uh, jump in real quick first. First thing I want to say is that um, uh, my man's Lee, you know, downplayed it or whatever. He tried to make it seem like he had to follow up behind me. And he came out and said, uh, I got a trucking company. No, nah, <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, but no, nah, um, what we try to do uh, in the space or whatever, especially in our social circle, but not only in our social circle, for a lot of the things that I put out and then Walt puts out on our um, our professional page, our uh, ICE Consultants um, business page on Instagram and LinkedIn, we try to put out positive messages to be able to help people get through the, the things that they're going through. A lot of people tap in with us according to that. Um, but we we have talks on a regular basis with with men that are our age, men that are younger than us, people that are really like struggling and going through things in their personal lives and in their professional lives. And if we can help, we try to walk them through that. Um, one of the things I didn't really mention is that I just got a like life coaching thing. And it was just like people are saying, well, why haven't you already had one of those? You should have one of those already. And this is like, I don't really think about it. Sometimes when when you see somebody that's in need, I, I think uh, my man just just spoke to it. We go through a lot of stuff and people don't even notice. So when like you notice it in somebody or whatever, it's, to me, it's imperative to try to say something to that person um, to try to figure out what is going on with that person. And then, you know, if I can't point that person in the right direction. So for me, it's just kind of that. I don't have an organization or anything that I'm doing, but like a lot of the work that I do um, with some of the people that we work with in the community, um, with Walt, I'm trying to get something going with my man Lee right here. I chop it up with Kyle every day about something in regards to mental health or men or how we should be you know, presenting ourselves. So, um, and that just kind of expands out to my social circle, which expands out into professional circles and other circles as well. So just trying to stay tapped in with the men in the community, because to me, it's really important that you know, I just saw a kid yesterday who said something and I didn't remember this kid. This was a kid from almost 20 years ago, but he remembered my name. It was like, no, I remember you, what you tried to do for the young men. And I remember and he told me his name and it like it came back to me and it was like, dang, that's been a long time. So. It's just been an eye opener for me a lot of times because I don't really know I'm always doing it because I'm not looking for something in return. I'm just trying to be helpful. So mm -hmm. but I can get on down. Yeah. Um, but pretty much what I'm doing right now is two things. Uh, first thing we I kind of mentioned the special needs of once podcast where that's based around my experience with my son. He is nine years old and he was diagnosed with autism at two years old. So um, pretty much. You know, I went through a tumultuous time um, and I didn't have an outlet. I didn't have a playbook. I didn't have any even anyone who could just wrap their arms around me and tell me it was going to be OK. Um, so we kind of walked in the dark um, uh, uh, through, through this whole process. And, um, you know, I was able to get through it. So I had to just think to myself that, you know, I wouldn't want anyone to have to go through kind of what me and his mom went through. Mm -hmm. um, so I wanted to to create a space where I could at least just talk about my experience. And, um, and I know that even just being able to talk about it is important. Um, what happens with a lot of people with uh, special needs and disabilities is no one talks about it. There's no, there's no friends. Oh, my cousin has this. My cousin does that. You're normally that one person in the family and, um, and no one knows how to handle you. It's extremely or, isolating. Exactly. It, and it neutralizes you and that falls into depression. Um, you know, I neutralized, I, I was neutralized. I couldn't do a lot. I didn't feel comfortable doing a lot. So um, basically my motive was to uh, create a space uh, for at least just people to talk, community, yeah. and um, just talk about their process, walk through it and be comfortable and be bold enough to um, to walk it out with your child. So that's where that started. Um, but I also have a, a, a men's call that I do three out of the four Saturday mornings um of the month it's wrapped around the bible the word um and uh what we do is we read a little bit of scripture and then we just fall off into conversation wherever the scripture leads us so we had a call this morning and uh it led right into uh fathers fatherhood and the lack thereof so we have men speaking on their fathers being there not being there um, I mean, we've had an array of different topics, uh, mothers walking out on. We, we cover so much. And it's just as men, um, we we bottle up a lot. We don't talk about it. Sometimes we're on that call for two hours with guys just talking about what they're going through. Yeah, so, yeah. So I just try to give them the space to talk and um, 
and it's just been great. It was wrapped around some a situation that I had a few years ago where I had a fire in my apartment. I almost died. I could have made I almost didn't make it out. So I had a few brothers wrap their arms around me in that moment. The moment that I became vulnerable is when the call started to take off. So we're up to about we started off with three guys and we're up to about 20 guys consistently every single Saturday. So yeah, that's dope. Yeah, that's dope. That's yeah. nice. Well, for me, to be honest with you, um, starting Heal Black Man back in 2021, it just started with what I thought was going to be just a, a Facebook support group. Um, God gave me something totally different the next morning. Um, and that was the whole vision of Heal Black Man. And it started with a panel discussion um, for black men, uh, moderated by a black therapist, where we just talk about, you know, those taboo topics that we need to talk about. Um, and it just grew from there. I had no idea how many doors it was going to open up for me um, just by doing that, by, you know, telling my own story and then creating the space for other people to talk about it. Yeah. Just, you know, to come behind exactly what you were saying, you know. Um, and now I create spaces that introduce men to peace also. So like not just talking and being vulnerable, but introducing healthy coping mechanisms. So um, I've hosted yoga classes for black men, um, floral, floral arrangement workshops, um, uh, breath work workshops, all different things that you know, uh, take us out of the societal norm or the stereotype of us just rolling up a backwood or, you know what I'm saying, pouring up some hen or whatever the case may be, um, really kind of shifting the paradigm for us and changing the story behind the black man. Um, so now I work in research now. I, I, have, I have a partnership with the University of Kansas and so to where I thought I was just um serving black men now i'm serving the youth with with nami the national alliance on mental illness mm -hmm. and the university of kansas doing uh research-based things making sure that um these older people are walking out a full body of wellness eating right that their mental is right doing all the things that can um basically slow slow down or prevent Alzheimer's and dementia. And so um, I act as a wellness coach for them on the bi-weekly basis, making mm -hmm. sure they stick to the diet intervention um, plan that we have, changing their diet from what they're eating now to a Mediterranean diet and keeping them enthused about sticking to the whole plan, you know, the whole plan. Um, and then a lot of a lot of public speaking now. I never saw this taking me Mm -hmm. all over the country but it's taking me all over the country i just got back from atlanta about a week ago mm -hmm. um speaking in the space of education reform so there's a, a, a organization called ed choice based out of indiana that saw me on on um, social media and decided to bring me in to actually educate me on education reform so that i can actually educate people in my community, fathers, mm -hmm. uh, parents, families on school of choice and making sure that they know how to advocate for their children in the schools and making sure that these kids aren't bound by their zip code and receiving a terrible, you know, a, a terrible education just because they live in a certain, a certain uh, zip code, a certain community. Um, so the list goes on and on, to be honest with you. And so I'm, I'm very grateful to be in the space that I'm in now. And I, I've literally, I, I don't know what's, what's ever coming up next. I'm just consistently like checking my email, like who knows what's gonna happen today. So, um, I, that's a blessing to be honest. I used to feel like, um, why is, why is this happening to me? You know what I'm saying? Like, I, you know, knowing all the things, all of my, all of my flaws, I definitely exhibited a little bit of like, uh, impos imposter syndrome mm -hmm. where I felt like, you know, I didn't deserve all the opportunity that was coming my way. Um, and so now I'm dealing with not trying to find opportunity, but actually be able to balance these things mm -hmm. and do right through those things. Because now I'm receiving opportunity, but how can I ask or want to receive more or be in a certain space if I can't handle what I have now? And so that requires me to show up 
in all different facets of my life and do the right thing. And so I'm in the process of, you know, a lot of a lot of shadow work, a lot of mirror work, making sure that, you know, my image, I'm walking what I'm talking mm -hmm. and then I'm stripping down and, yeah, for sure. you know, doing what I need to do to be the best that I can be. It's not about me being mm -hmm. uh, an expert, mm -hmm. just only a perfectly imperfect human being that's yeah. just going through the same, going through the journey, just like everybody else. And it's just other people out here, most people out here, don't want to talk about it. And so I'm just trying to make it look cool. You know what I'm saying? That's, that's just what it is. For sure. For sure. I think that's a reality, Major. though, bro. Everything you just mentioned, everything everybody just mentioned, but it's just the the taboo topics that, you know, we we dance around, right? We don't really talk about how it impacts us or, you know, what's actually going on in our day-to-day -day lives. We just are quick to be like, I'm, I'm good, right? Number one lie we tell is I'm fine, right? I'm okay. Yeah. And and the reality is, is when you become aware that you're not okay, you you need to investigate it. And I think that that's where I started with me and the mental health journey that I'm on. It was with me and recognizing, man, I was not all right. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Uh, my actions and behaviors and things that I was, you know, involved with and people who I was involved with had a lot to do with my self-esteem and how I viewed mm -hmm. myself and my mm -hmm. value and my worth and understanding myself better and really knowing that I needed to do some deep searching yep. Yep. work on myself yep. you know I'm saying to get me where I needed to be. And then it started to expand from there outward. Right. So in conversations, I'm intentional. I mean, it gets awkward, but it's OK. I'm, yeah. I'm good with awkward. Yeah. Right. Like I'm OK with, you know, awkward silences after a question's been asked that makes a person stop and think. Mm -hmm. Right. And so. um and to say things that challenge the 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 norm, right? Like we know what hypermasculinity looks like, we know what it sounds like, you know, and we know how we've all subscribed to it as men from time to time, right? Absolutely. If not on a more regular basis. Um, and so having the courage to be able to talk about that in various places, whether I'm at work or in the barbershop, where we know it really goes down. You know Absolutely. what I'm saying? Um a lot of things you know, we can stand to be that voice of reason and accountability. And I think that's the biggest part, mm -hmm. um, not to downplay the amazing work that's being done on the organizational platform, you know, the company level platform, whatever we're doing out here in a more structured, you know, uh, sense is amazing. And that's work that's going to help streamline what we're doing. Um, but I think, as you stated, it's more than just um, word. It's more than just a narrative and the thing that we say because there's a lot of pop words out here man you hear yeah. narcissism on ig all the time you hear mm -hmm. um you know you just said a very popular word in terms of um what did you say it was imposter syndrome yeah right that's a it's a popular word and there's a real yeah. thing and i know yeah. you probably likewise as everyone yeah. else has probably dealt with it but it is you know what are we doing with this and how are we actually addressing it and, and coming into awareness of how we can actually move forward yeah and i think those conversations in real time with people um is what we need and it doesn't always have to be with a credentialed individual i mean you can have real conversations oh, absolutely. that's part of what i want to help our community do is get comfortable with identifying things um concerning our mental health and being able to have some of that first immediate in you know intervention um, yeah. That doesn't require diagnosis. It doesn't require anything that a, a credentialed, you know, professional practitioner would do. Yeah. But it's something that we can see and we can intervene. We can mm -hmm. speak to it. We can say, well, what do you not normally do if a person's like having a, a panic attack? Right. And if mm -hmm. they're accustomed to going to see somebody who helps them, maybe they use, you know, DBT to help them um, with their anxiety attack. Mm -hmm. You ask them, maybe, hey, what do you normally do to help yourself calm down? And that person might say, well, I normally do deep breathing. Well, right. Let's do deep breathing together. Right. That's an intervention until we can get you it's to so somewhere in the care place. of someone who can help, help you further. Right. Yeah. And so that's what I would like to see for our community right. is that we have more people who are comfortable and can identify and see like that don't look right. Something's going on here and you feel comfortable enough. You don't have to feel obligated to engage, but you feel comfortable enough that if you do engage, you can help them. It's almost like performing CPR yeah. until the paramedics arrive. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That Amazing, kind of man. thing is what I yeah. like to see for us. Yeah, right? absolutely. Yeah. And just thinking about that, everything that you guys spoke about um, in terms of not needing like a credential person uh, nah. or something like that, but even being a resource in your own being, mm -hmm. right? Um, it's, especially until you, you know, dig into some 
more professional help. Yeah. Do you feel as if everything that you guys are doing and that we are sitting here talking about, do you feel like we have enough resources available for men in the city of Milwaukee to actually walk these things through, actually talk these things through and find ways to where we can include ourselves and identify and be like, you know what, we, we look like you might need a hand. Do we have enough resources? Do you think we have enough? I Absolutely not. not. <laughs> Absolutely not. Um, I think there's, there's change makers that's trying to, you know, boost on the ground, trying to, trying to make change happen. Mm -hmm. Um, we got a whole, a whole panel right here sitting, mm -hmm. you know, a whole line of guys making change or trying to push for change, but it takes so much work to actually make these things, these visions, these platforms, these grassroots organizations, these podcasts, these all of these things. It mm -hmm. takes so much to get those things to go and be sustainable. Sure. Um, yeah. And when you talk about sis the, the system and the systemic design um, and we talk about, uh, for one, Milwaukee being the number one worst city in America for a black man to live mm -hmm. and then deal with the way the system is designed. And we talk about us creating spaces and resources for us to be right. Mm -hmm. That's just, you know what I'm saying? That's like, <laughs> you go there laughing, right? It's like, it's like word soup in a sense. You know what I'm saying? It's like, it's a lot to even think about. And it's a lot of flips and, you know, a lot of extra work mm -hmm. that they make you do mm -hmm. to actually make these things be mm -hmm. sustainable. For sure. uh, foundations or whatever in our community. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would, I would agree. I think we don't have enough quality, um, things for, for African American meals or whatever. And I think, you know, part of, part of that is due is that mental health itself is, is just a new thing in our community. It's, it's really in its infancy or whatever. So mental health for our communities as a whole is not really been out there for our communities. So now when you, who, who's the last person on our list in our community? the African-American male, the black male or whatever. So he's going to be last and getting the, the resources that he needs. So, Please. so again, like if we, we talk about us five that's sitting up here right now or whatever, and we can probably point to one more person that that's doing something out here that's healthy for, you know, our community. But what he just talked about, there had to be so many pieces in place. Right. And what, what my man Kyle just talked about, you had to be on your journey too. Yep. Yeah. So you have to be consistently be on your journey because you can't <clears throat> when you're doing this, you can't put out things that go against what you're saying. You can't project that out for people to see that you're doing this, but you saying this on this side or whatever. And we we still got a lot of people that struggle with that in our community or whatever. So it take a lot for for a community resource to be there. And when mental health is such a, it's not, it's not really as young as we think that it is or whatever, but it's been introduced in our communities. We're starting to now say, we got to change this. Yeah. We got to break this paradigm. Yeah. We got to mm -hmm. try to make this happen or whatever. Yeah. Now we're saying these things. Right. Mm -hmm. And so it's, like I said, though, we're the last on the totem pole in regards to that. Yeah. And so it's imperative that us, as as black men, we take the reins for it and say, we have to do this, right? Absolutely. You just said how like when you started out, you didn't really see it going that far, right? Nah. Mm -hmm. And it and it developed it just kept <laughs> developing, right? Yeah. Because and my guess is we just met today, right? But my guess is that you've been consistent in what you've been doing as far as being a man, right? Every single day. Your your journey, mm -hmm. your mission, Every what you've been trying day. to do. My man Lee, you know, he, he, he had an instance of whatever, a specific instance in his home or whatever, right? Mm -hmm. It forced you to go out and do it, right? But mm -hmm. I'm going to just say a lot of men crumble from this. Mm -hmm. My, yeah, my background in education, I've been a guidance counselor for the last 14 years before going over to the advisor space. And you see these families come in and you see these men and they, they, they crushed. Yeah. They, they're crushed, right? Mm -hmm. So like, even if the woman is there and the man want to know something about it or whatever, he been beat down so much in, in some of these spaces or whatever, because as a man, you're not supposed to ask. This is a woman's space. Yeah, and man. I'm just, and again, I'm just saying that. They not even expect you to show up. This is what I'm trying to tell you. So, so when you're there or whatever, for you to be able to be assertive in that, that space and know what questions to ask and all those different things, it's hard. So there's been many times, Walt and myself, we pull men to the side and you all right, bro? Like, nah, what you're doing is what you're supposed to be doing. Keep asking the questions or whatever. Sometimes you come here and people can't understand why you're upset. 
Mm-hmm. Right. People don't get why you're mad. The first thing. But all them doors that got closed in your face. Right. Yeah. All them questions that did it went unanswered, went unanswered. And like a lot of times when they you can see it. So it's like, no, let me yeah, let me off. say something to him yeah. real quick, because yeah. if the wrong person says something to him or if they don't get him the answer, he's looking for it. And again, we, we haven't always been taught not to just rely on anger. Right. Mm-hmm. Or frustration. What you just say, like mm-hmm. breathe. Yeah. breathe so many times as a guidance counselor we have kids that's been diagnosed with something right we didn't have special education so guess who got to go in there holloway get down there right yeah so with this kid it's just like look at me just look at me real quick hold my hand breathe mm-hmm. breathe nobody did it with them nobody walked them through they saw the behavior and they just said nope nope yeah. somebody got it and i'm not a i'm not a special education person but i know when i get upset i need to breathe I know I need to walk. I know I need to reflect. I know, but again, if that don't, if somebody don't intervene sometimes, mm-hmm. and if it ain't the right person, it's over with, Absolutely. right? So, I I think no, we don't we don't really have enough or whatever because again, all five of us that's sitting up here, we had to come to a point in our lives when it had to bing us like, dang, I'm 20, 30 years in and didn't even realize that I'm not taking care of myself in the way mm-hmm. I should be. Yeah, mm-hmm. right. Absolutely. I start talking about that. Next thing I know, it's five men saying. The, what? Know, what? Huh? Right. Huh? Like, like actually, yeah. Yeah. me too. Me bro. too. Yeah. Right. And yeah. so it becomes this conversation of, you know what? Let me check in what Kyle is more than dog. Cause something happened with me. Yeah. And let me run it by. I, I wasn't even feeling like talking to nobody. Yeah. Yeah. Let me see. Let me just say what hey Kyle, what's going on? <laughs> Go here, bro. Go. Go, Go ahead, here, bro. That's exactly what it is right there, bro. First of all, the question is the intervention. Like when you're asking, are you okay? Like, whether they say they are or not, whether we, you know, go into it or not, it was a pause. And you had to do some sort of an evaluation, right, Mm -hmm. in that moment to see what was going on. But that's exactly what I'm talking about. To go back to your point, no, it's not enough resources. It's a lack of resources in our community. I'm going to just say in the black community. And it's a lack of proximity to Mm -hmm. whatever resources are there. Mm -hmm. It's the other part. We're so far away from it. It's environmental too. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And so you got so many, it's layered, bro. It's it's complex. Um, But I think, again, it's no different than the reliance on after school programs, right? Education programs, Mm -hmm. Boys and Girls Club to fix the youth. Uh, right like it's never going to be enough of those never never ever going to be enough of those so it's twofold the the journey starts in the in the in the kitchen at the table yeah. it started at home you know what i'm saying yes. it's right there in the home because when I your really kid not right they're gonna it's be looking fact. at your kid like where is your daddy exactly. who is who is this kid's dad point you know what i'm saying <laughs> and that's what i'm saying and we all the big here fact. Wait, we like, what? Seen that's somebody. The that's one of the biggest questions who is his daddy yeah, I mean, exactly. Because they always say, um, I was listening to something the other day where they said, like, you know, when daddy get himself together, the house get together, it gets better. Mm-hmm. You know what yeah. I mean? And I think that's the big thing, especially with us being um, that mainstay, that person that's supposed to be there. Mm-hmm. But a lot of times, um, I think, like, growing up, if we look back at when we were young men, talking about this type of stuff wasn't even on the table. Nah, man. man. It was kind of like, Shun, like, uh uh-uh. uh. Remember, mm-hmm. we had to get mm-hmm. back up. You have to keep mm-hmm. going. Yeah. No We've been conditioned to just bottle it up. Yep. To it's, bottle it's, it's it up. Our, it's, I mean, it's right when we start perspective, playing sports, not to trust. Yeah. So it started off right at home and right, as, right in sports. Anybody All right, bro, you ain't hurt. Love corroborates. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yep. So anything, so any, any, Anything an institution has passed down in our society and we read about it, hear about it, all that, we don't trust that. Yeah. yeah. So what, what grandmama and them said, right, what, what, what big mama and them said, what they passed down or whatever, and they were in a different time where you had to survive, right? Yeah. So mm-hmm. it was imperative that they just kept pushing, right? Yeah. We won't, they passed that down from generation to generation, and now we won't even stop to look for a resource. We just mm-hmm. keep going. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Yeah. I'll, I'll, and I'll, uh, <laughs> yeah, I'll, go, I'll, go go ahead, real, go I'll go real quick. It's because, crazy um, to try to not to jump in, though, right? It's like yeah. double dutch, bro. Really I, yeah, I, yeah. I yeah. Like, I've, been, I've just been letting go y'all ahead, talk. Go ahead, At least move the mug up. But no, nah, uh, <laughs> come on, man. Uh, uh, I'm 50 50 on the, uh, the, the lack of resources. And, and here's why. Yes, uh, we we know we've accepted that every black community, there's a lack of resources. Right. But we've never talked about mental health as much as we're talking about it right now. Mm-hmm. So we got to look at it as glass full, too, because we've never even spoke on this level about mental health. So we can start there. But also, 
we're all, all five of us are all doing different things, right? We all just kind of finding out what each other bring to the table. For sure. So that ego, that male ego, right? We all feel like we got to all do each and everything on our own versus if all of us collaborated and came together, how many more people could we impact? Yeah. Um, so that's how I, I think that we have resources, but we got to tap into them, right? Like everything that my son is doing now, my son, I, the first thing I remember the doctor telling us when we found out he had autism was that he'll never play team sports. He'll never play sports. I, that's the only thing I remember. I'm sure he said more, but I heard that. Mm-hmm. And I was just like, at this time, I was a sports buff. Like, I did everything sports, yeah. right? And then now he's doing MMA. He's doing basketball now, right? But it started with community resource. Right, What's right in front of me here, right? Mm-hmm. We got a guy that's doing the MMA. He's right here in the city of Milwaukee. All right. This I didn't have to go to uh, Autism Speaks or South Southeastern Wisconsin um, uh, Autism. I didn't go. I didn't have to go there to find that community. All of this stuff is right in front of. We just got to tap into it. When we got tapped in with Q, who's teaching teaching lead basketball now, Special Olympics. Yeah. I, I, it took for me community to come together and said that he look. This is what he does. I'm like, well, I get my son tapped in. So I think. I think that we have the resources, Mm -hmm. but we got to actually look to tap into them and we got to drop that ego at the door and say, hey, brother, how can I help you? How can we help each other? You know, and and, and those different things. So I think there are resources like you just you shared a resource with me Mm -hmm. just now. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't have known about that had I not just talked to you about the situation, you know. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of the same thing. We get there's resources here, but we got to tap into them. We got to drop the ego at the door. And say, hey, look, how can I how can this situation uh, help me? You know, a few things about that. And again, I, I agree with you to a degree. Are are they accessible to us all the time? I think what we we're, we're five of us up here or whatever. A lot of us are we've been through, you know, educated in this way or whatever. You run it. You run your own business and you had the, the, the incident, not the incident, but like your son. Mm-hmm. It caused you to do certain things. It yep. caused you to go out and get it right. Yep. Yep. For those people that are stuck in an environment where there's not readily accessible and people are not always saying that. Right. So so we have to also couple what you're saying with the education level of our people. Some of them are in poverty. That stuff don't come to you right away. And in poverty or whatever, you're still seeing every day reinforcements of the same negative stereotype. Mm -hmm. So when people come to you and they talk to you about it, you say, no, because I don't. It's I don't stigma, do that. Man. That's what it is. It's I don't stigma. do that. I don't. Yeah. No, we we like what you say. We about to go roll this fronto. <laughs> we yeah. about to go do that. We're yeah. not doing. So curl one up, bro. So I'm curl I'm, I'm telling. So it's it. it yeah. Yes and no. So mm-hmm. like, is it an accessible thing? Kyle just talked about this, right? It's it's environmental too. It's where you grow up. We just said the Boys and Girls Club can't. It can't just be that raising your kid. It has to start at home. And we have a lot of parents. And again, I've seen this over and over and over again. Because I, the parent is working two and three jobs, they're not at home. Mm-hmm. That's right. They they don't tap into the support system or whatever because my sis, yeah, my sister, I could send them over there, but she wilder than me. Mm-hmm. I'm just trying to work. I can't send my kids over there, so I don't really have a really good support system, mm-hmm. right? Less Mom time. and I'm not good because, again, they come from the crack era. Like, yeah. it's, it, it's not good in a lot of these situations. Not to situations. mention dad's so, not in the home. So dad's so dad not is in the not, home, mom I, working three jobs. I'm getting to that jobs. point, but go ahead. I'm getting to that point. It's the systemic design. I didn't, I didn't mention a man in that situ- situation at all be, yeah. on purpose because it's, he's not there. Yeah. Right? So there's nobody there. So even when he is there, the resistance sometimes that he has to, d- to get because he's not in the home anymore and the, the, the girl has moved on. So every time he come back, there's resentment there. There's all these barriers there, right? If he's even like, I've, I've, or watched, he may not be coming back. He might not be coming back, but it's like <laughs> some people are pushed away to the yeah. point to where they can't come back. Absolutely. Without it being a whole knockdown, drag out everything. Yeah. You know, I've walked a few of my friends through the, like, you got to go get your kids, bro. Like, you got to take your girl to court, like, or your, your baby mom to court. You got to do this to be able to get the custody or whatever, because the situations that you're going through right now, they're not going to change unless you go down there and take some sort of action to say right. and and be present and to tell them, no, I've been I having a job and they've been with me every summer and I've been the one doing this and I've been the one doing that. So you have to go down there and show that. But like there are a lot of barriers in the way of us back to the point of what we were talking about. There are a lot of barriers that are in the way of that. Again, 
is new in our community. It's not new, right? Uh -huh. We've been seeing in movies and everything. White folks been sitting on the couches, laying on the couches, and getting psychiatrists since it we was, was young. For white folks, that's why. And again, them, you know. and, and mm -hmm. it, but again, I'm not, I'm not trying to say anything about my white community. So forgive me, y'all. But I'm just uh -huh. saying. We've I, been I seeing care. that. It's not. Let you know right it's now. not new, <laughs> right? Yeah. It's new to us. It is. It we, is. We but there is an show. emphasis. There is an emphasis on it, and that's why I can't. I that's why I can't say there's a lack of 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 resource in it because now, with I've never heard so many men come to me and say, "I've been going to therapy." Hey, I you know I, yeah. I've been doing therapy. You know, I I can't. I got to reward that. Right, the, because yeah, we, gross. The, we, we that's not, that's we exactly what I was getting ready to say, and I don't want to hog all the time. So I'm, but the 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 area for potential for it is such a, a big place. So yeah. now it's exploding, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. What we seeing with Caitlin Clark, WNBA, been there. Caitlin Clark galvanized the whole thing, so now it's being galvanized and it's being pushed a little bit more, right? So you hear about it a little bit more than you used to hear about it. It's out there a little bit more, but that's because mental health, period, is out there a little bit mm -hmm. more. Mm -hmm. So yeah, the potential for it is very vast, it, it, and and again, every day is something new popping up. So there are resources that you can find. Mm -hmm. I'm not I'm not saying that there aren't resources, but are they reaching to the places where they really, really, really need to go? Are we really getting down in those places, down and nah. deep? And it take it take a little bit. So I, I found a lot of times I wasn't gritty enough in some cases, right? Some of these kids need a little bit more grit than the person that's coming to present to them to get a little bit down and dirty with them to change the attitude or change the behavior and mm -hmm. do this and that. And it's going to have to happen with our men too. Mm -hmm. and, and the reason that I want to jump in on that is because you, you talk about representation in this yep. field so that i calculate that in the proximity and the resource as well yep. because i need to think black about practitioners think about it's, it's lot, one bro. step further mm -hmm. black male practitioners in the mental health field are rare less than one percent so when you're looking for somebody who look like you you see what i'm saying and really the way that the mental health field has been cultivated um and designed to support and perpetuate in certain areas has been mostly by middle-aged white women, right? So when you hear about a lot of the things that are going on, the data is supporting largely in part that demographic. Absolutely. And so this is why it's very difficult for us to get involved and for us to want to latch on because we don't see ourselves yet. We're starting to a little bit more, but it's difficult because we don't really see mm -hmm. ourselves in the data. We don't see ourselves in the practice. The gentle parenting, that ain't really, <laughs> that ain't really a thing. If we talk mm -hmm. about, you know, with all of the, the nuances of what I've yes, been man. learning <laughs> in marriage and family therapy yeah. and dealing with parents and how you actually deal with your children, mm -hmm. right? Gentle parent, parenting is an extremely new concept mm -hmm. for yeah. our Absolutely. community. Absolutely. Because we're not really going to talk to you too much mm -hmm. yeah. about a thing that we didn't told you twice now to do yeah. right. after that you know what's coming next yeah right at least that's way the way i was raised i'm mean, yeah. you know, was raised different but yeah. yeah it was not <laughs> sweet yeah the sword, right sword. so we're starting to do some of that and i do think that that is there are huge benefits to a lot of the things that we are um learning but i think that we also have to as practitioners i feel like one of my um sole obligations is to find out how this fits within our culture Mm -hmm. Right. Not to just cookie cutter take what I've been listening to and hearing and just dropping it dead center in the middle of our neighborhood and our community to say, hey, y'all, let's right. do this thing. Right. But it has to fit the nuance of our culture and it has to respect our culture as well. And, and so when we know it and we can bring it there, it makes it easier. But do we have enough of that right now? Nah. No, I got a question uh, based off of kind of what you just said um, with representation and um like having people in a space that look like us and and I'm not saying that we 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 it, it, someone has to or or they don't but when are like when are we going to start being comfortable with hey look there's nobody in this space that looks like us you know like the with what I deal with and I can only use my example as an you know my experience as an example here but you know with autism and special needs there's no color in that there's no color at all. These resources that I'm tapping in with, a lot of these people are, are white, Europeans, those different things. 
yes, they're dealing with the same thing, but they're coming together. My son goes to a predominantly uh, white school and the amount of inclusion that they have him in, it just changed my heart completely. They include him in everything. My son led a, a concert, right? The yeah. autism, they say you can't talk, you can't speak. My son was singing in a concert this fall, I mean this spring. You know, yeah. that level of inclusion. And I had to also say, hey, let me take my blinders off to where like, I think that only people that I look, that can that can help me, we need allies. Mm -hmm. on, I was gonna say, we got some good allies. You know, but... We need allies. So it's like, even for me, I don't see anyone in the space that I'm dealing with with autism and special needs. I don't see anyone that looks like me. Other podcasts that are similar to mine, they don't look like me. Mm -hmm. So I just said, look, I actually got to walk this one out myself. I got to be the one guy. Mm -hmm. You know, hey, I'm black. Yes. My son's black. Yes. Mm -hmm. But we got a, a team around us that's from every single different color. You know, why? so my question was like, why do we always have to feel comfortable? Yeah, I get it. We're more comfortable with our own people, 100%. Mm -hmm. But we could be missing out on the sponsorship, you know, of somebody that 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 has the same that. kind of walk as you. I respect right? that. I, and I don't know if anybody else has anything to say. I just want to. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I think I I have so much to say. <laughs> go ahead, um, go ahead. I, but I, I'm, I'm trying to figure out, you know, where I'm going to actually start. I think, I, I don't know. I don't know if it's really truly about being comfortable with the fact that we, we occupy white spaces. Like everybody's not going to be comfortable with that. Mm -hmm. I personally find myself, that's where I find myself to be a, a special individual. And that's because I grew up in a suburban there school go. district. There you go. And so I figured out, I learned how to, you know, exist with there other you people. You know there what I'm saying? Go. But at the same time, like, I guess the next question, there's a lot of whys to be asked. Why after why after why? And the why is why do we see that these that these resources are predominantly white? Mm -hmm. It's because of the systemic design. Mm -hmm. And um, for a person like me or like us, we go into white spaces and we hold it down. We advocate for our people. Mm -hmm. But there's a power in numbers. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. On on both sides. So this is a twofold thing we're talking about. If I show up and it's and it's just me and I'm talking about my community to 150 white folks, like it's not gonna hold as much weight. Mm -hmm. And all we can do is be, you know, optimistic and glass half full it, you mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? And 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 take one day at a time, one step at a time. Um, but those but those those environments are definitely not something that's comfortable yeah. in a sense. Like I'm comfortable going in there and working the room and yeah. advocating and doing that. You know what I'm saying? But that takes a special type of person. Yeah, it does. When you grow yeah. up within the like the confines yeah. of the yeah. MPS school mm -hmm. district, that's just not yeah. how it works. Yeah. Like yeah. A lot of a lot of a lot of my friends that grew up in NPS, they don't mess with white people. Yep. It just is what it is. Right. Let me, let they me just add don't. to that. Let me add to that. Like, you know, and I'll speak from my perspective. You know, it's different structure for different folks. So first of all, I want to say, you know, congratulations that your son is making it's like yeah, strides, it's great. Bro. Yeah, absolutely. Like, I love to hear that. Like, yeah. I don't care. The team you got around them is amazing. And mm -hmm. I, I it doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. like, you're right. And you feel comfortable, and that's the biggest thing. That's as long as you feel yeah. comfortable, your son feels comfortable, and yeah. you're getting the progress and you're seeing the, the gains that you want to see, mm -hmm. then don't don't fix it. It ain't broke, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, yeah. but there are different individuals who feel differently, right? And yeah. I know in my experience and my seeking out a therapist, um yeah. It's tough. That's what I said. So it's many tough. angles. I've, yeah. had a, I've had a white woman as a therapist. Yeah. I've had a white male as a therapist. And I spent a good majority of my time educating them <laughs> on black culture. Yep. Yeah. They and don't understand, <laughs> bro. So they're just taking your money. You know what I'm saying? And, and I, I feel like, you know, they had every intent, intention to support me and help me and like do the things so that they didn't end up just being the people that just took my money. But it was just and Kyle, not a vibe, bro. Resource, it just wasn't resource, working bro. out where I'm like, resources. every yeah. time I say something, they're like, what was that? But, but yeah, like, Kyle, what do you Kyle, mean? Can you explain that nuance Kyle, to me again? You got to look at like kind of like what my point was, was resources, right? Yeah, you had a, a white woman, white man, a uh, counselor, right? When I had my therapist, it took a while to find him. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. it took a while to find him. I, needed a, I knew I needed a, a black perspective. So that's when community stepped in. One yep. of my one of my friends at the time, he was going to this therapist and he's like, Hey, he's black. 
Um, he's cool. He actually used to be in the NBA, played at Marquette. He's from the city. It took for me to say, okay, I can probably have a conversation with that brother about what I'm dealing with. So they, it goes back to like definitely know who well, your yeah. therapist is. Definitely yeah. know who your therapist is. <laughs> but, but at the same time, like yeah, you so, just so described the when, one guy. Yeah. Like, so, so, so it's, it's, there it is again, that, though. Like, yeah. yeah. There when it is again. That, the that, one guy. The one yeah. guy. Yeah. So when you look Y'all at that, like you him. think about like, yeah, like context matters though. So like yeah, we got this one guy that we all know who it yeah. is, right? Yeah. But he has his own story, his own context. And so there, there, he may not be able to pair with yeah. every single black man mm-hmm. and understand That's his right. right you are we already said like he's a highly touted person yep. everybody that's too. coming to yeah. go have these conversations with this man yeah. is not they're not highly touted people you know sure. what i'm saying yeah. and yeah. so he you know he he's, he's got a chance to experience a way different life not to say that like not to discredit like whatever his trials and tribulations are because context matters but at the same time like just to paint a picture, like objectively, like stand, step out of the picture and look at it, like it's this one man in a yeah. sea of white people yeah. trying to represent or serve mm-hmm. the whole population of black, you know, so less than 1% for black men and I believe 4% or less for black therapists in general. Mm-hmm. And then we're not even talking about the systemic design as it comes to, let's just say, all of us wanted to go on the journey of becoming therapists and what we have to deal with working through the white For sure. institution For sure. and receiving the help. And the, the <laughs> yes. The and so now there's platforms being built. I have a brother out in Atlanta um, that's creating a platform to help black people who want to become therapists so they can have the support that they need mm-hmm. and not fall by the wayside because it's not designed for us to make it through it. And that's a huge point because yeah. when we talk about like even like you said, if we all were to like go to an educational institution to try to become therapists, right? Mm-hmm. We're gonna get the academia pieces, right? Yeah. The academia pieces is gonna come from that Caucasian more so that Caucasian yes. perspective. So yeah. before mm-hmm. as educators, as young as me in here trying to navigate these spaces, we gotta be able to trim off the fat of what yep. we don't need and conform mm-hmm. it and make it best for our society, right? Yep. And one thing I appreciate right now just about sitting back and listening to all you we got a lot of different perspectives. We Absolutely. We also have the antithesis of that, which is great because I think sometimes when we think about men's mental health, yep. we think it's going to be an argument. Yeah. It's and all just about perspective. It's yep. all about yep. perspective. We for sure. Distance, we, we're going back and forth mm-hmm. and that's rich. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's very rich and that's important for people to actually be able to do all in this space in general, but also yep. outside when it's not, no cameras watching this, yep. right? Yeah. Yep. As opposed to, we don't have to be, you know what I mean? They went back and forth, right? We went back and forth. We shared the different ideas, but we ever do that. And I think that's a mentality thing for an African American man as well that we need to try to change those mindsets. And when I think about this, all of us are either husbands or fathers of some sort. Mm-hmm. And I just think about the difficulties that we kind of like go through. Man. And segue into my next question because we stayed on that topic for a long time. I yeah. wish we had more time to do it. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, but what is one of the, the most difficult things you kind of like deal with, whether it be on a regular basis or just in your life period as a father, as oh, a husband? Man. Like what is one of the most things that's like, man, I've been dealing with this on a regular basis or all the time? Well, for me, it's going into this field um, and having the knowledge about mental health that I do. Um, it's about it being a lifestyle and you practicing it and not letting lines be blurred because in real time, and I'm talking about helping families and supporting families, I have my family. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And my response is to my family, trust you, me. They believe, they know it, they see it, they calculate it, and they remember and they hear all the things that they hear me say and maybe might even watch this podcast and be like, oh, I remember when dad said that. Right. And then on Monday, Dad has the same opportunity to show that peace and that love and that yeah. restraint, right? Like, what's he going to do in this moment? You see what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. So it's always about that, like letting it really truly be in us. Yeah. Yes. That's the hardest part for me, because unlike most professions, <laughs> like therapy, if you become a therapist, um, which, again, I'm still on the journey to, 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 to do in the most official capacity, but people tend to help you remember that in the moments where oh you might my be being God. human, right? Mm-hmm. In your most human moment, they'd be like, oh, 
Mr. Therapist, right? Like, yeah. you lost your temper. Yeah. Oh, you feel away? Oh, you did that, right? And it's so, it's like, that is one of the more difficult things. And of course, now you 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 talk about now enter perfectionism into the chat, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> right. And feeling like I got to be perfect every single time because someone could be watching and someone could see me in my human form yeah. and then not give me the lenience or the understanding or the grace, or the grace right? Right? right, to make a a, a, a mistake and, and then go back and honestly fix that with some, you know, humility and integrity right. and do what I do. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, and that's what I think is the, the more difficult thing for me is to not be in my own head about those types of things. Yeah. Gotcha. Oh man. So that was perfect for one. Um, and I think that, you know, that ties back into, uh, you know, the vulnerability piece and um, men wanting or feeling comfortable actually being vulnerable because um, I guess for me, I don't want to speak for everybody else, but my number one fear with, with vulnerability is um, someone weaponizing you know, the, the, the information that I gave them. Mm-hmm. And then when you do that, then it actually ties me down even tighter. Like, all right, well, you ain't got to worry about me saying nothing else. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And so I have to continue. That's why it's the most, it's the bravest thing that you can do. And you have to continue to, regardless of like the reaction that you receive from anybody for your own sake, you have to continue to be vulnerable because mm-hmm. It's like one of one of the number one like self love acts that you can do for yourself as well. You know what I'm saying? Bottling everything up is never gonna be the key. So, man, I try all different things. I write every day now. Journaling has been a come become a great tool for me. But to answer your question, um, my my greatest challenge right now is truly balance, man, um, and and making sure that my kids, well, for one, that I'm, I'm doing all that I can to be a good husband, father, leader, right? That's pressure in its own. Um, but then making sure that my kids are equipped with the tools to exist in society now and where it's trending to go because they are experiencing things that I never, that we never experienced. They have access to things mm-hmm they have access to influence that we never even had. And we all, the makeup of every person, we all are who we are based off of our traumatic experiences. And that that makes you, kind of that makes you who you are, how you deal with adverse situations. And so I think the biggest pressure for me is being able to equip myself with, with the greatest know-how and doing the the most shadow work and being honest and, and looking in the mirror with myself and not pointing a finger at anybody else because it's so easy to point the finger at someone else, whether it be your spouse, whether it be the system, whether it be your boss or whatever the case may be, a friend, there's always a way that you can look in the mirror and say, how can I make this, you know, better for my environment, for me? Um, and so I'm just in a space now where I know that I have to go back into, you know, an isolation phase mm-hmm. where I have to kind of hunker down, get rid of silence, all the extra noise that create chaos in your mind to be able to focus on whatever you you found to be your purpose. Um, and that comes with choices like those, those that extra noise in your head, that that stuff comes with choices, whether it be what you allow or what you chose to do, whether that be usually it's something that's not right. You know what I'm saying? So if you cut down the things that you actually chose to have on your back, then you can silence some of the noise. And then the other distractions is just really just solely outside. Like, so if that means that sometimes you got to shut down the social media, sometimes you got to not go out like, bro, I'm just trying to read, write, (laughs) and focus on being present and take care of my health because Mm -hmm. all of this as a black man, Mm -hmm. 
as a black man, the pressure that we have mm -hmm. to show up on all levels, mm -hmm. to be a leader and be a husband and all of those things and a father, it could kill you. Bro. And I and I totally understand. It's not me saying that I would ever do anything like this, but because I wouldn't. But I totally understand how men run. Mm -hmm. They disappear and they never come back because we're not all equipped with the right tools a fact. To, to, to cope with these things, these healthy coping mechanisms. Like we're not geared up for that. Mm -hmm. And so that's the community that we see here mm -hmm. trying to make sure that we all bind together to, com to create a, a fist <laughs> and a fist. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Would knock some out, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's my piece. That that was a serious fist, bro. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, um, no, I guess you could have went too. Oh, we want to hear what you got to say too. Go um, well, for me, um, the biggest thing, and I'll be I'm be super vulnerable here, um, being a father and a husband, because uh, they are two different things. Mm -hmm. um, I remember one time my wife actually told me like, "You're a great father, but you're not that good of a, a husband." Mm. And obviously got married a little young, you know, so, mm -hmm. you, you, you know, when you get married, uh, you see what you see on TV. A lot of times growing up, I didn't see a lot of people that were married. So who was I supposed to try to emulate or try to get the game from, right? Mm -hmm. So going through it, I knew my mom took care of me. So I knew how to take care of some kids. I mean, education as well. So, yep, what do I need? What my other children need? You know what I mean? What's, what's needed? I'm there for you. I'm yep. anticipating needs. You sick, you come to me. That's that's what it is. I'm yep. here. I'm picking up, dropping off, make sure everything's good at school. Um, but being a husband was tough. How do you love this woman the right way? How do you I had to grow into that? Mm -hmm. I had to really grow into that because I just thought like I'm taking care of the home. Mm -hmm. I'm going out here, I'm coming back home to you every day. That's good enough. That's good enough, but that's not enough. It ain't even close. <laughs> that's my thoughts, right? <laughs> yeah, so yeah. that's what that continues to be a work in progress for me. Mm -hmm. Um Obviously, one is getting older. My kids are older, so they're a lot more self-sufficient. Yep. Mm -hmm. So I've been able to focus a lot more intentionally on yep. being that husband. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't always have to be taken out. It's just sitting down, actually having a conversation, getting out of the phone. So a lot of times, if you do, you find out you're being perfect strangers. I'm acting like I'm in my phone. You're acting like you're watching something. We in the same household, but we're not even, you know, we're super distant. So um, that's been my biggest thing. That's one of my, my biggest things is trying to do that. But mm, also yeah. not losing myself in that. Right. right. So I, I, I find myself ripping and running for the kids, picking up, dropping off, then trying to spend time with my wife. I be losing myself because it's like I look back at me and I'm depleted. I'm done yep. at the end mm -hmm. of the day. So I got to go early to the gym. Or I got to yep. super late to the gym. Yep. Yep. I got to work it around all that and I don't have time to do that. So mm -hmm. um, that's been one of the things I've been trying to do better. So now if I'm at work, we taking walks. Mm -hmm. I need those walks. And those mm -hmm. walks accompany are accompanied with conversation. Yeah. About what's going on, kind of clear my head because it has been a time where I left it all up in here and you start feeling it on your chest. Yeah. And what they start to tell you, you mean it's you're not supposed to cry, right? Mm -hmm. you feel yourself getting missed. You know, that's mm -hmm. the last little thing that little handle is about to go off. I'm about to be mystified. Man. And I gotta hold it together. I gotta swallow it. Mm -hmm. You know, you feel almost sick. But it's to the point where like now I'm like, I didn't identify that. Yeah. And I, it's a continued journey. So that's my biggest thing right now is what you trying to do that now. Man. I like it. I love that. That's yeah. Uh, I would say my biggest challenge right now is perseverance. Um, I think that I got a lot going on around me, um, not with uh, not even specifically just my child, but I got that going on with him. But um, just professionally, uh, family relationships, uh, e uh, even losing relationships. Right. Like as we ascend, you know, the same friends that you had, like my whole what I look at as a friend is really no more. A lot of the people that were with me. When I started, you know, people, even people that went to the, my graduation from college are no longer around me. So that affects my mental health, too, that I can't that I'm not even close with the people that have, have been here for me. But I, I'd say perseverance because I just got a lot going on around me and I've just had to push through it. I, I've We were talking about depression. And one thing it does when I feel depressed, I get I neutralize. I'll sit somewhere. I'll stay there. I won't do anything. I'll just, yep. I, I'm immobile. I can't be productive at Ooh. all when I'm depressed. So um, I started to identify, remember you said self-identify. I started to identify that thing. when I can't move, 
And when I can't get up off the couch, I'm depressed. And it's a reason for that. So what I've done now is I fought back. It's times where, you know, business may take a dip. I still got to get up and go to the gym. I still got to read my 50 pages a day. I still got to get up and read my word every single morning and pray. I got to do that as opposed to just being stuck in what I'm dealing with. So, um, and I've had to lean on God for that. I have had to trust in him and say, hey, you know what? Give me the strength to to push through this right here, right now, because I don't have it. And um, that's the biggest thing I've done to fight, like what I've been dealing with. And we had spoke about um, panic attacks. I had a season where I had uh, three panic attacks in four days and I didn't have a, a, um, a resource on how to get through that. Right. It was walking. That's what did it. Because I used to have them when I went to sleep at night and I would have. Soon as I fall asleep, soon as I crash, I would start to feel like I couldn't breathe, like I was dying in my dreams. So I had a phobia. I was scared to go to sleep. So I had a girlfriend at the time and we she used to get up with me and we would walk. It'd be two or three o'clock in the morning. We'd be walking in my neighborhood. We'd go down to the lake, the lake and walk. And that's how I was able to, you know, get through it. Um But yeah, I think just uh, being able to persevere has been difficult when you got so many different people you got to show up for. I got to show up for my family, my son, my son's mother, uh, other relationships you have with with different people. Work, you know, we're trying to grow the business. We're trying to grow the podcast. We're trying to push awareness. I got so many people that I have to show up for. So I just have to constantly, like yesterday, I drove 14 hours. You know, I got two employees now that I have to also show up for. Right. I had to drive 14 hours yesterday, got home, crashed, still got up at 630 this morning to, for that call. I got 20 men I have to show up for, even though I'm tired, I'm beat, but I still got to show up for them. And that's through God, God giving me the strength to to persevere through it. So that's the I would say that's the most difficult thing is pushing through when you don't really got it. Um, really before I start mine, I just want to say that, um, this is why it's so important for us to be checking in with each other. Like everybody here is, is saying something very similar. Um, uh, for me it's I'm, I'm torn a lot of times because I feel like at my age, my life doesn't really belong to me anymore. It belongs to my children, my wife and the things that I'm trying to, to, to accomplish me and Walt and I got a bunch of projects that we do that are they're imperative that we that we put those those projects out because we feel like those projects might be be helpful to other people. True indeed, we selling them. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So I'm trying to sustain my life mm-hmm. based yeah, on that. Bro. But I don't, you know, the the balance like we all said, the balance. The, but my thing is that I gotta pour into my son, right? Mm-hmm. There, I, I I grew up with my father, but my father was very matter of fact. Yeah, he said something that was it we didn't have <laughs> conversation well, like, hey, hey. and I'm gonna just say this and I'm gonna say this too like <laughs> I, I come from a family it was eight, eight children right so my mm. father had to raise eight children and my mother didn't work so I can only imagine the amount of stress that he was under every single day coming home he wasn't a handyman so like things got broke and you can imagine it was eight kids there things got broke quite a bit oh yeah <laughs> He didn't fix things, so he always had to pay to get them fixed and this and that. So it was like Mm -hmm. a really crazy dynamic, right? So I can only imagine what he went through, but that's what I saw. So to be able to communicate to people when I wasn't taught to communicate with people, right? Yeah, I was in the house with eight people. But we fought a lot. It wasn't like we had to have conversation. We sat down and said, may I use the TV today? That mm-hmm. didn't happen. We just, Whoever got to the remote first. So learning those social skills and learning where the hangups was, like that didn't happen for me until later on in life, right? Yeah. I would look at my father and be like, dang, you doing that. That's what you're doing, right? So finding like finding myself, not losing myself. And it took a long time for me to be able to find William. Right. Mm -hmm. And be like, no, you like this. You got to go do this. (laughs) Like you got to take some time to go do this. You got to walk. You got to write. You have to read. You have to exercise. Mm -hmm. You have to spend some time in silence. No phone, no TV, fresh air, just chilling. Take in whatever you can take in. So really, it's it's, it's really about finding that balance. And like like Lee said, the like. Pushing through, um, I just went to the doctor a couple of weeks ago and found out that I got a torn ligament that's been torn for over 10, 10 years in my wrist, and I didn't know it. So, like, you've just been taught to continuously push through it. Mm-hmm. 
push through it, push through it, no matter what's going on. And I didn't know. Just these last few weeks, I'm tapping, and it's like, ah, golly, what's going on? The lady said, yeah, you got a torn ligament there. It's been torn probably for over 10 years. And I'm like, how does that happen? She's like, well, she showed me some stuff on my x-ray, and I ain't going to go all into that. But it's just like, that's crazy, right? Yeah. How many people are walking around? And it's not always a physical scar. Some, a lot not of times it's an emotional physical. scar. It's a traumatic yeah, scar that you can, you're not getting over that, right? And you're stuck in that place. You're stuck. And that nobody comes to you and says, look, bro, I've been in this place. Let me try to help you get out of it, right? I, I can't give you everything. I can't, I can't necessarily say, go do this, and that's going to work for you. So you got to do some trial and error for yourself to figure out what works for you. But I can at least recognize that you're stuck, bro, and that you need somebody to come in and help, like you said, that intervention, mm-hmm. right? Everybody here has said the same thing. Now, these are all people up here that's trying to do positive things with their families, with their communities, and everything else. And everybody said the tremendous amount of work and anxiety and pressure and everything that you feel because at the end of the day for me it yeah i got a wife and i got children or whatever i got a lot a lot a lot of stuff going on a lot of issues and stuff right if things don't work out that's my fault yep i always have to go back to say that's my fault right Mm -hmm. because i'm the man i chose I, i made this happen i made this come together or whatever and yeah people had to make decisions to be with me and everything else or whatever but at the end of the day, I'm I'm before God, right? God, then it's man. So it's up to me. I'm not before God. I'm trying to just say <laughs> that's to yeah, see God, Lord, man, God. right? So it's on me, uh-huh. right? So I feel that constant pressure every day to make sure that they straight, they're straight, they're straight. And I always go back to my father. He made sure we had everything that we needed, right? But emotionally, I always had to go tap in with my mom, right? Yeah. And that's a different set of skills. It's a different set of skills, right? So when things happen to me and I didn't know how to respond to it, and my father didn't say, no, nah, look, this is what you do in this situation. And they had a blueprint. I didn't have that, right? So I see my son struggling with this stuff right now, so I need to be able to walk him through that, right? So that when you get to certain situations, it's not, it's not a problem anymore. And then the quicker you get that, the quicker you'll be able to adjust. But not only that, you can also show other people, whether that be by actually walking them through or by example. So That's a perfect segue. Um, so the last question, you want to take it? You over. know, I'm, you know, I'd be um, long with it. So before we get out of here, I want to make sure that we are being resourceful, right? Yeah. So what is what are two things that you would like to provide or you could offer? Like we talk about these mitigating things, these strategies, and things like that for the people that are watching, especially these the men out here. What is one thing that you, one or two things that you would suggest that they do? All right. Um, the, the two. <laughs> I, I might have to give you three. Uh, it's all good. <laughs> so I'm, I'm gonna actually give three. Um, one, you gotta choose yourself first. You gotta choose yourself first. And you know, it's the cliche that said like, you can't give from an empty cup, but it's really true. And when you're feeling um, stuck, um, sometimes your mind, your brain is not going to push you off the couch. Like you have to turn to your body. Your your physical actually strengthens your mind. And so when you're not being physically active, um, you're you're literally weakening your mind every single day that you choose not to do that. Um, so whatever you have to do to be active, whether it's walking or getting up early, like it make it may take some sacrifice. Like I'm so happy that the NBA is over. Like when when the finals is over, I was like, God, thank you. So I can like go to bed on time, so I can get up at 4:30, so I can get all of this time in the morning before the kids wake up. And then your thoughts, all of your thoughts, deserve a space, a place to go. And I, I'm a huge advocate now for um, like journaling. Mm-hmm. And it may seem you know, we got to fight past the fact that it may seem girly or whatever, the, or whatever the case may be. Like you writing in a diary, but like you better find somewhere to put your thoughts. You ain't got to write it. Find that voice memo on your phone. Mm-hmm. You got a vir- you got a, you got a virtual journal right there. And if you really want to like break past the thought of it being a girly thing, we all listen to music, right? <clears throat> Most of these guys, that's how they getting through. Their trials and tribulations. That's how they connecting with you because they writing down their thoughts mm-hmm. on, on paper. And so you got to do that. You got to find a place for your thoughts and your feelings okay. to go. 
Mm -hmm. That's that. Um, I I would just say, you know, like like we're doing here, make sure you tapping in with the men that are in your life. Um talk to them. You know, you got older guys in your life, let them tell you a couple little stories or whatever. Um, you might you might pick up some gems there, but like I I'll just say some some years ago or whatever, I got re energized by Walt tapping in with a younger guy. Like I got re energized by him. I was struggling with a lot of different things or whatever and being able to tap in with him and his energy every morning like you straight fam you good bro and like we do this every morning right are you all right you good like yeah. and being able to do that i do that with kyle now or whatever because like some mornings you walk you walking like man don't nobody really get it dog mm -hmm. so i'm just like but you haven't one. really been around yeah. a, another man yet <laughs> and sometimes i'd be like let me run this by kyle mm -hmm. we sp we speak on it and he's like yep 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 and it's just the validation of knowing that yep. somebody else has been through that. And let me just tell you what I did in that situation. So just make sure you're tapping in with, with the men that are in your life or whatever. It's really important and it's really easy for us to feel like we got to do it by ourselves so we don't do that, right? Or when we tap in with our, we don't never really get into nothing deep. We just go right into, you know, what we're going to do for that that time that we're spending with each other. But so mm -hmm. I just, you know, just talk to them every once in a while, tap in and then take some time for reflection, you know? Yeah. For me to be able to find out what was what was going on with me, I had to reflect. I had to really look back. I had to think about what people had said to me that was like triggering in some cases. Why did why did they say that? Right. Then you go back three or four steps and you're like, dang, that that's why they said that. Right. Oh, you do really kind of need to work on that. So just making that time for reflection, whether it's journaling, whether it's, you know, taking that walk and really, really thinking through um, whether it's talking into the, the voice memo and recording yourself and going back. I, I wrote a letter to myself one time and read the letter six months later and was like, dang, I was on something totally different than I'm on right Man. now. Right. Mm -hmm. But it, it, it got me back to the point of go back to, you know, just like in basketball, if, if something ain't working, go back to your fundamentals, you know, go back to your base, your, yeah. where you started at and how you built yourself up to get to this place. Because as a young youngster or whatever, you had to go through certain things. It, it, you had to, right. And you knew how you felt in that moment and how you got through it. And sometimes it was wrong. You're like, nah, let me try this way this time. So just that time for reflection and then checking in with your tribe, man. Yeah, I would agree with that. Um, two things I would say just to echo the sentiment that I've been hearing. Um, it's clear that a lot of emphasis has been placed on self-care, mm -hmm. right? What are we doing for ourselves? Take time for yourself. Be balanced for yourself. Mm -hmm. Um but it's arguable that community care is just as, if not more it's important. Because who you got in your circle, man? Who do you have around you that when you don't got it in you, mm -hmm. yeah. they calling you like, hey, yep. yo, I see you, bro. Mm -hmm. You know, yep. it's the debrief. It is the check-in. It is the I got you. I'm on my way. Mm -hmm. it's a fact. You know what I'm saying? Like, we need that. That's mm -hmm. huge. Huge. So, yep. yeah, self-care, absolutely. Community care, we got to have more of that. Yep. And then for black men in, in general, we are more than what we do. Man. <laughs> our worth and our value exceeds well beyond what we are able to do. Mm -hmm. yeah. I know that that has been a narrative and some things have been shaped since slavery. Yep. Since being sold off the block. Yeah. Yeah. For your build and what? Oh yeah, you better get a lot done. Yeah. I can tell you're gonna be good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. Your va our value has been predicated on providing. our ability to Pro perform. Pro providing. Yeah. Do, Whatever you provide. provide yeah. And yeah. do all of these things. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so just understanding that and and knowing that there are a range of reasons and things to be celebrated about and valued for and understand that our worth is tied to beyond what we're able to do. And that's especially, especially in the context of relationships, especially in the context of marriage. Yep. I'll leave it there. Go ahead, Walt. Woo, drop the mic. Man, uh, again, I echo everything you guys are saying. Um, one thing that I'm just gonna add to is, like you said, the community care, talking to somebody, um, being, Choosing that person or the people that you choose to speak to wisely. Mm -hmm. um, you want somebody that's objective, but you also want somebody that's going to not always, not always going to agree with you. 
Yeah. I need somebody to be like, no, you was actually tripping more. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, and it's okay for you to say that to me. Yeah. I want you, I want to be able to reciprocate that to you as well. Yeah. Me and I had conversation on a regular. You don't always agree, but it's to a point where it's never taken personal. It's like I'm 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 here to lift you up. I want you to see it different. He wants me to see it different. Same thing with Holloway. Same thing with Kyle. You got to have people like that. And I ain't sure I've been space and being able to do that. And you traveling across the country doing it, which is wonderful. And I can only imagine how many people, especially black men, are out here right now sticking to the side of somebody that's going to continue to dish me, enable them, yeah. continue to allow them to do something and sure. not push back yeah. at all. We need to embrace the pushback. We need to mm-hmm. want it as opposed to it being like an argumentative or yeah. of a contentious situation. No, this is actually some great banter. We're going back and forth. I might talk crazy. You say something crazy like, man, you tweak it. Mm-hmm. You know you tweak it. And Kyle might be like, huh? He look at, you know, with his suit on and everything. Like, man, come on, man. You don't got to do all that. You know what I'm saying? I just get that's straight. Ghost. <laughs> Ghost from power. That's my Double-breasted thing. power. Like, double-breasted Kyle. But that's what I'm saying. DB like, Kyle. That's what I found to be the most beneficial. <laughs> Growing up, I would all my boys, we all on the same thing. They telling me the same thing. We all on the same tune. But when you get older, you recognize I need diversified thought. I need mm-hmm. diversity in thought. And for a black man, you need diversity in thought. Your best mm-hmm. friend might not be the person that you need to see. It's a fact. It's a fact. Mm-hmm. You gotta audit that circle all the time. Mm-hmm. All the time. It's a fact. Uh the two things I would say is um uh Kind of what I've been uh, saying is is just to tap into your resources. Like uh, we don't, we look past the what's right in front of us. You know, uh, sometimes our our family, um, our, our friends, they have different experiences, and and we don't know until we tap in. A lot of the answers are right in front of the people that God placed in front of you. I can get a lot of answers from each and every guy in here. My parents, my family, my extended family, we got to tap into that instead of just thinking that they don't know. Right. When yeah. when uh, we found out that that Lee had um, autism, my family knew nothing on how to handle that. They they knew nothing. Mm. And then now we fast forward. I gave them an opportunity. Right. To educate themselves. Now they're. For They're sure. just a part of this just as much as me. Imagine if I say, okay, well, man, my, they don't get it. They ain't never had nobody. They don't know how to, they don't know how I parent. Right. No, yeah. I had to teach yeah. them myself yeah. and say, hey, look, this is how we got to teach For him sure. different things. This is how we got to feed him it's different things, you know? So I would say tap into those resources. But then um, Harry was talking about like self, um, not self-control, uh, like self-preservation basically mm-hmm. and um another one is, is is what he was right online with when he was talking about the finals rest it's a fact mm-hmm. I, I i don't have a lot of quiet time it's come seven o'clock that phone is ringing the emails are flowing uh everything is going so i have to get up earlier right so i have to go to bed a little bit earlier so i have to be up sometimes i get up at five in order to you know pray do everything i gotta do in the morning gotta get up at five For yeah sure. my day may not start until eight but i gotta get up at five just so i can get a jump start on the day because if i get up at seven and eight like everybody else it's it's over with. oh man it's yeah over with. yeah it's, 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 it's crazy so Chaos. i would say uh sleep is is especially for your mental health too mm-hmm. you need no sleep question. you need rest so a book, right. man. a book says um it's called rest is resistance yeah um i can't remember who the artist is or the author is but rest is resistance it goes right along the lines of what you guys are saying i think yeah. that's big you need you need that rest so yeah, for sure it may tell you hey, oh man i don't normally get to bed it's about 11 okay let's start working on something at nine let's start to you know to get to get to when i get i used to it was a point in time where i used to fall asleep with my son i'm going there trying to put him down they see you know i'll wake up it's 12 30. yeah i'm for sure like, oh man yeah. you know but that's a that's we do the same thing for our kids we should be doing it for ourselves we got to go yeah, to bed bro. at a decent hour you can't you watch power he, bro you can't watch power and, he, bro. and eventually your body will tell on you too like yo, your, your <laughs> body will tell you to shut it down like you got to you know what i'm saying after a while when you're not getting adequate wet rest so that that's a major point or whatever after a while or whatever things start happening until you, you get a little wobbly or whatever there you go and you and you got to lay it down which, which you found that remote yesterday he's just like had a whole had a whole appointment for, with that with that nap real quick. Yeah. So your body will sit you down. Yeah, it will sit you down. So uh, man, I just appreciate each and every one of you coming on here to uh, you know bless the platform, come on out here and just be able to be open and talk about these things. And again, the diversity and thought 
Um, love, you know, Kyle is doing great things at MATC with the FILA. Maybe I'll be in that affinity group. Uh, I hope so. I hope both of you brothers will be. Shouting about that. Right. Um, Harry with the heel black man. I ordered my shirt. Just like, you know, so yeah. I'm just waiting on that. Yeah. So, yeah. He's, you know, he's doing all, all those great things. And I want you guys to make sure y'all shout out y'all Instagram stuff at the end and stuff like that. Lee, Alan Dedicated, Special D's Podcast. Mm-hmm. Uh, He's been uh, gracious enough to let me come tag along with him a lot. Co host. Co host. Things like that, which is great. Um, and then my boy Holloway, you know, been tapping in for, for years since I was a teenager. Um, wisdom, beyond wisdom. Um, always working with the kids and things like that. I'm just, man, just fill my cup for the day. I don't want to do anything else. Honestly, I just want to take it all in, watch it back, and things like that. So I appreciate you all. <laughs>